Hi, my name is Marian Jantia and welcome to my vlog. Um, today, I worked on my project. I worked on it for about an hour or two, which was a lot longer than usual, which is good. This is great. And um, what I've been doing is uh, learning and researching and just getting uh, deeper into all the different mechanics of the project. Uh, looking at products, product names, looking at uh, just learning the, the general basic uh, physics behind a lot of uh, my concepts because I'm trying to amplify the light. And so I need to uh, figure out ways or methods of doing so, so that it's, uh, the projector is bright enough. And so um, I'm just learning as much as I can regarding that right now. And it's progressing along. Uh, there are a couple of things going on in my life that um, I feel like I need to ensure that this progresses along faster. Uh, I guess one of them is um, just personal, like, oh, man, I could have done it kind of thing. There's uh, a CES 2021 award given to a, um, a shower uh, Bluetooth, or I'm just making shit up now, sorry. A shower speaker that uses heat to charge or use for music. And that was actually an idea I had, uh, not very similar, honestly. However, using similar mechanisms to power things. So I could still do that. It's just, uh, that's just how I am and what I've been doing is creating all these ideas, but whenever I do so, I don't uh, follow through with them all the way through. And so I'm going to stick to my guns and keep working on this one until I have an actual product. And I do believe that I could pull this off. If anything, I feel like um, I might need... Uh, Maybe, no, nah, even for the basic stuff, I'm, who knows? I was thinking uh, maybe a programmer it would be really nice to make it a lot smoother. But if I could just do the first template, you know, um, the first prototype and start convincing um, angel investors or something, I think uh, that's going to be really, really good. And so... Um, that's it on that front for today. Oh man, no, there's actually something I wanted to mention regarding this last night. Not this specifically, but my filming of the project, but I can't remember now. Damn. Sorry guys. It would have been helpful for you. For anyone who follows. Um, in other news, there was, uh, there's apparently a shortage of uh, transistors going around right now because of the pandemic uh, automakers had stopped making orders for just-in-time micro chips I think it was just some sort of transistors from across uh, I think generally mostly Asian countries maybe Taiwan or something Thailand and well, and it was because the shutdown, the shutdown closed all their factories. And so they had, they had fewer people working on the lines. The demand for vehicles was down because everybody was uh, not commuting any longer and working from home or, yeah, things like that. And um, because of all that, the semiconductor industry had to that was supplying the automakers with chips had to figure out a method to survive during the pandemic. Uh, I mean, the automotive industry was 
reliable, dependable, and accountable for just-in-time shipping of said semiconductors. However, because of the pandemic, they have to figure something else out and retool for consumer electronics like webcams, laptops, and everything else related to electronics because there was a huge boom since everybody was working from home, staying at home, etc. And so that took a lot of money and a lot of time for those semiconductor companies to retool, supposedly up to two months where they were bleeding. And now it's hard for them and not tempting enough for them to build chips for the vehicle industry. Because of that, the vehicle industry is uh, struggling and they're not finding enough chips to build or to incorporate into their vehicles. Because of that, they're actually apparently now stalling and unable to build additional vehicles all across the U.S. at all different types of uh, vehicle manufacturing plants. And so I think they're trying to beg the incoming administration to help them somehow. And I think I read something yesterday where they were like, well, we don't want to blame anyone or it's nobody's fault, really. Uh, but honestly, it, in some ways, I do believe it's the automotive industry's fault for for just cutting the semiconductor industry cold turkey. And because they did that, and plus the dependable just-in-time uh, scenario, oh, this is gonna be interesting actually after COVID because just-in-time manufacturing was so critical. And honestly, with COVID, it shows that it's very beneficial, but at the same time, look what's happening with the automotive industry. Hmm. So complicated. Something to for someone to look into, huh? Pretty interesting stuff. And oh, finally, there was a uh, short Bloomberg video I saw today on um, YouTube. It was talking about creating or using. So first of all, we have all these uh, telescopes. Um, some are infrared, some are radio, some are ultraviolet. They're not just like the Hubble telescope where you could actually see an actual picture without filters and whatnot. But um, there's an idea, I think from also from Caltech, to use the sun as a disc. I'm not, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable saying accretion disc because I don't know if this is true in this situation. But basically using a um, using the sun as a magnifying as a telescope I guess um, and since it's the sun is so big what you do is the sun curves light that's coming from behind the sun around let me do it around my head around the sun see like if this was the sun there's like light glowing all around this area. And so this, um, that data could be translated with uh, some basic programming and software edits to translate and see what's on the other side of that, uh, of the sun. But in order to get that correctly, you have to travel, you have to put a telescope around 600, 625, uh, parsecs away. One parsec is uh, the distance between Earth and the Sun. So 600 is, so about, I think 30 is about the distance to Neptune and the Sun. And so 625 uh, or so, 630 is much about five times further away than Voyager 1 and 2. And so they're thinking of maybe using a solar sail telescope to get to that point. And if it was launched today and they slingshot it around the, the sun, they might be able to get it to high enough speeds to uh, get to that 625, 630 parsec distance in about 25 years and they could uh, and most of the 
scientists were thinking that the best place to um, view like actual planet and see the atmosphere and maybe some vegetation or if there's like bodies of water or rock formations or something the first one anyone and everyone would be interested in which totally makes sense to me as well as Proxima Centauri A and B uh, which is four light years away uh, our, our closest neighbor so in about 30 years maybe we might be able to have actual pictures of the planets uh, encircling around Alpha Centauri A and B so that's pretty amazing it would be so amazing to see that okay well this is marian signing off